Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper and in this video clip I want to discuss with you a really interesting concept which is called zero order ultra sensitivity which is one of the key features of any kind of regulation in metabolic pathways or in biochemical pathways in general. Now zero order ultra sensitivity is something that uh, has only quite recently been understood, uh, although it's been around for well, uh, a long time. And it's sort of a really strange concept. So uh, what is it? Well, let's assume we have uh, a protein. And this protein is phosphorylated. So we get a phosphoprotein, and I indicate it like that, phosphoprotein. And the enzyme that is responsible for this reaction, we know what it's called, it's a kinase. Kinases use ATP and transfer the phosphate onto the protein for example, and we get ADP pack. Uh, now, for every phosphoprotein or every phosphorylated compound, we usually have also a counteraction which removes the phosphate, and that is usually done by a phosphatase. So, a phosphatase just simply removes the phosphate, and we get our protein back. And uh, scientists have really thought about this long and hard. What's the point of doing that? Uh, we create a phosphoprotein and then we destroy it, destroy it again. It's a little bit like my wife brings in all the money at home and I spend it. So what's, what's the point of that? And only recently we began to understand that this actually has an enormous importance for any kind of regulation and I show you uh, why this is. So uh, so that I don't have to write uh, always phosphoprotein and protein and get things confusing, let me just simply abbreviate this here with an A and we call this one the phosphoprotein B. Now we can write if we assume that these are just simple uh, michaelis menten equations, we can write for the kinase reaction, kinase rate, so that would be rate, uh, let's call that rate A, equals, we have Vmax A, and I abbreviate it like that, times substrate A, that's our protein, divided by Km, for the kinase plus the substrate concentration, in this case, the protein, the unphosphorylated protein. And for the phosphatase, so for the phosphatase, we can write the same thing, but this time it would be rate B equals Vmax for the phosphatase times the concentration of the phosphorylated protein, that was B, divided by Km for the phosphatase, the substrate, the, the affinity, plus B. So these are basically our michaelis menten equations, and there's nothing uh, special about it so far. Now, if we say, for example, that uh, if, uh, let's say, A, our concentration of the protein, is much larger than the Km of the kinase. So if we've got more protein than the, or if we have high affinity of the kinase for its substrate, uh, and we do the same thing for the phosphatase, so B is much larger than the Km for the phosphatase, what we end up with is sort of a simplification. And I've shown that in a different uh, video. So if under these conditions, we are basically running very close to the respective Vmax. 
So we would get VA, our rate for the kinase, is pretty close to Vmax for the kinase, and Vb equals close to Vmax for the phosphatase. So we are basically operating at zero order. We have substrate saturation for both enzymes, for the kinase with the protein and for the phosphatase with the phosphorylated protein here. So we are in zero order. Now what we can do is we can basically say we can write a rate equation. We can say our change in A per time unit would be, well, the thing that is delivered through the phosphatase, so that here is positive, so that was VA, let me write this, so VB, and the reverse reaction here, that would be VA. So we can say we get VB minus VA. And that is always the, uh, the, the case for the, the change in A. We can also write this for the phosphorylated protein, dB over dt, and uh, there it is exactly the opposite, Va minus Vb. We can also uh, substitute that. We can say here we have Vmax B minus Vmax A, and here we have Vmax A minus Vmax B. Now, if the Vmax B and Vmax A cancel each other out, if they are exactly the same uh, size, same magnitude, then so if Vmax A equals Vmax B, you can imagine what happens. We get dA over dt equals zero. So nothing happens. We are ending up in what is really called a steady state. Steady state. And there's no change in the concentration of A or B. Now if we've got only a limited amount of A and B, say a thousand molecules of uh, A and a thousand molecules of B. We have got two thousand molecules uh, of them and we wait long enough. What we will see, however, is that if these two are not exactly the same, so if we, for example, have if Vmax A is a little bit smaller than Vmax B. Let's see what happens. So if Vmax A, if this branch here, let me indicate that with a color, if this is smaller than this one here, we produce protein qu quicker than we remove the protein. So what we have in this case is everything, if we wait long enough, everything ends up as A. Just simply because VB, the green one, is larger than VA and eventually we end up only with protein A. Now if we have exactly the opposite, if Vmax B is smaller than Vmax A, we get exactly the opposite. Everything ends up, ends up as B. So Vmax B is smaller, so the green one is smaller 
than the red one, so we will get everything in as a phosphorylated protein. And that is basically what we have said here. Now, we can write this here also as a sort of a fraction. We can write this as Vmax B over Vmax A. And what we see is if Vmax B is smaller than Vmax A, then this ratio here would be smaller than 1. So, if the ratio is smaller than 1, we end up everything in B. And likewise, here, this ratio, we can do that as well. We can write Vmax B over Vmax A. And in this case, it would be larger than 1. So, what we can actually do is we can sort of plot that and we can say, right, here on the y-axis, we plot the concentrations of A and B. And here we plot the ratio of Vmax B over Vmax A. Now, if we have the value of 1, then we have reached a steady state and uh, really nothing happens. But what if we are not at 1? Well, we know that if we are smaller than 1, then we have this case here, and everything is in the form of B. If, so that would be B, but if we are larger than 1, then we have no B left. So that would be B. For A, the curve is exactly opposite. It looks like this. So that would be A. And that is a typical graph for this zero-order ultrasensitivity. So what, what is the purpose of it? What we see here is that even a very small change, very small change, in the ratio, in ratio, of Vmax B over Vmax A a minute change in this ratio away from 1 could either lead to everything as B, that is our phosphoprotein. Or, so if we go that way, f away from A, if we go that way, we end up with all the molecules phosphorylated. Or if we go in the other direction, just a tiny, tiny change in this ratio here. A minute change in this ratio. If we go the other way, or everything then is as A, so the unphosphorylated protein. And you can imagine just uh, changing one of them, so for example we, we slightly, slightly reduce Vmax B, the Vmax of the uh, phosphatase, we reduce the phosphatase, uh, then we end up with this scenario, scenario here, everything is phosphorylated. 
we increase the phosphatase just by a very small fraction and everything then is as the dephosphorylated protein. So in a way what we see here is a very sensitive very sensitive switch just by changing slightly the Vmax of the phosphatase or the kinase, we can drive the system either into the phosphorylated state, either into the phosphorylated state or into the unphosphorylated state, just by ch simply changing the phosphatase or the kinase, kinase activity. And we really need to change it only by a tiny fraction. So by, let's say, change of, depending on the system, just change by 5% of the um, ratio of Vmax A and Vmax B, or Vmax B over Vmax A, just by 5% change in one of them, we get a completely different outcome. So this is an extremely sensitive switch, which is of course used for many, many reactions in the cell. And we know that the human genome has about 200 kinases uh, and corresponding phosphatases. And that makes about um, 2% of the human genome are dedicated to these switches to turn on and turn off certain reactions. So this ultra-sensitivity um, switch, this zero-order ultra-sensitivity, is a very, very elegant switch that allows us with minimum effort to move between two different states for example, in a protein or in uh, uh, any other substrate, it's not re uh, just restricted to proteins. So next time you see a system like a kinase and a phosphatase system, please remember we most likely have a really sophisticated switch system that allows fine regulation of metabolic pathways. So I hope this makes sense and thank you for watching.